generally speaking, when we cook our own food, it's much healthier than eating out and way healthier than eating fast food because when we cook our own food, it's mostly unprocessed food that we're eating. But there's four specific dangers of cooking food that have the potential to make us sick, whether that come in the form of increasing cancer risk or making us more likely to gain weight. So let's start with the first danger of cooking food, and that is high heat. Heating foods to high temperatures can be bad for a few different reasons. One of those is something called glycation. The process of glycation occurs when heat causes glucose and fructose to bind to proteins, creating advanced glycation end products, AGES. And fructose is worse than glucose when it comes to ages. In fact, fructose metabolism leads to seven times more oxidative stress compared to glucose. Ages can be found in many processed foods, which are often flash heated to kill bacterial contaminants. Recent research suggests that ages are not as harmless as previously thought. They're absorbed through the gut and into the bloodstream where they bind to receptors on liver cells called rages. This binding drives a molecular signal that stops the burning of energy and promotes fat accumulation instead. Studies have also shown that high levels of rages in teenagers are associated with obesity and blood vessel damage. There was another study of 78,000 women found that those who consumed the most ages had a 30% increased risk of developing breast cancer. One particular age, acrylamide, has gained particular attention. Acrylamide is formed when carbohydrates and fats are heated together at high temperatures, and this is found in foods like french fries, but also coffee. When acrylamide is absorbed, it's carried to the liver and converted into a carcinogen called glycinamide. One study found that a third of cancers tested showed alterations in the cancer genome associated with glycinamide. Additionally, there's a recent meta-analysis that linked acrylamide exposure with premenopausal breast and uterine cancer. Although these studies don't prove that ages are causing damage, the data shows enough correlation for there to be concern. Heating foods to high temperatures can also lead to the formation of trans fats. Trans fats are incredibly unhealthy and they're not commonly found in real whole food, but they can be easily formed when unsaturated fats are heated to high temperatures. When an unsaturated fat, such as olive oil, is heated past its smoking point, which is around 325 to 350 degrees for extra virgin olive oil, when it reaches past that smoking point, the cis double bonds in that unsaturated fat end up turning into a trans bond, so a trans double bond, and that results in the formation of trans fats. There's actually a study that demonstrated this by frying falafel in canola oil at high temperatures and then mixing the spent oil into rat feed. The rats that ate the spent canola oil showed a higher incidence of colon tumors and gut inflammation compared to those that consumed canola oil at cooked lower temperatures. So this highlights the importance of understanding the smoking point of different oils and how heating oils to high temperatures can result in the formation of trans fats. Of all the oils, extra virgin olive oil has the lowest smoking point. It's around 320, maybe 350 degrees Fahrenheit, making it the most susceptible to trans fat formation. In contrast, saturated fats such as lard are safer to fry because they don't have those double bonds and they can't be converted to a trans fat. So just make sure that if you're cooking with oil that you're not going past that smoking point. The conversion of cis fats to trans fats is a complex issue in the field of nutrition and epidemiology. This is because it's difficult to measure the temperature of stoves in each kitchen, making it challenging to accurately assess the impact of trans fats on health. The second way that cooking food can lead to bad health is through flash heating because that can form 3-MCPD fatty acid esters. So these guys are a harmful byproduct that can be found in processed foods. They're formed when free fatty acids from fats react with chloride ions and salt during the process of flash heating at temperatures above 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 204 degrees Celsius. These three MCPD fatty acid esters have been shown to have toxic effects on the kidneys and the testicles and may also impact the liver and other organs. The European Food Safety Authority has established a maximum limit for the levels of these substances in food, while the FDA has only issued a guidance and not a specific limit. Okay, the third thing is non-stick cookware. Non-stick cookware is coated with a material called polytetrafluoroethylene, or PTFE, which is a type of poly and perfluoroalkyl substance, meaning PFAS. So these PFASs, they're a group of synthetic chemicals that are resistant to heat, water, and oil, which makes them ideal for use in nonstick cookware. However, when the nonstick coating on the cookware is heated to very high temperatures, PFASs, they can then be released into the food that's being cooked. 
This can result in exposure to PFSs, which have been shown to be carcinogenic and obesogenic. PFASs have been linked to certain types of cancer, such as liver and testicular cancer, as well as colon cancer. They're also obesogenic because they have been shown to interfere with the body's ability to regulate weight and metabolism, and this can lead to an increased risk of obesity and obesity-related health problems. The other thing about PFAS is, is that they also persist in the environment for a long time because they take a long time to break down. This means that they can accumulate in the environment and get in the food chain, leading to widespread exposure to these potentially harmful chemicals. So just be aware of the potential dangers of nonstick cookware and just know that you can use alternatives like cast iron, stainless steel, and even ceramic. Okay, the fourth thing is grilling polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons or PAHs. So these are a group of chemical compounds that are formed during the cooking process, particularly when fat and juices from meat come into contact with high heat sources such as flames and hot coals. This can be done during grilling, barbecuing, or smoking of meats. PAAHs are also present in the smoke that's produced during the cooking process, which can cling to the surface of the meat and also be inhaled. Studies have suggested that consuming and inhaling PAHs may increase the risk of certain cancers, including lung, breast, bladder, and colon cancer. PAHs can be formed when organic matter, such as wood or coal or oil, is burned or subjected to high heat, which causes the release of chemicals that can bind to other substances to form PAHs. But the formation of PAHs during the cooking process is a particular concern because of the popularity of outdoor cooking methods during the summer, whether it's grilling or barbecuing or smoking. There are several different factors that can influence the formation of PAHs during the cooking process, including the type of fuel that's being used, the cooking temperature, in the cooking time. For example, cooking meat over charcoal or wood is more likely to result in the formation of PAHs than cooking meat over gas like with propane as the organic matter in the charcoal or wood can contribute to the formation of PAHs at a higher likelihood. So similarly, cooking meat at higher temperatures for longer periods of time will also result in the formation of more PAHs compared to cooking meat at lower temperatures for a shorter period of time. There are also several methods that can be used to reduce the formation of PAHs during the cooking process, including marinating the meat before cooking, using a lid on the grill or smoker to trap the smoke and reduce the amount of PAHs that come into contact with the meat, and choosing cooking methods that don't involve high heat, such as baking or boiling. Additionally, consuming a well-balanced diet that includes a variety of fruits, vegetables, whole intact grains, can also help to reduce the overall exposure to PAHs and even potentially counteract some of the effects of the oxidative stress and so forth, especially if you're consuming omega-3 fatty acids. That's gonna be all for this video. Thank you for watching. And if you wanna know more about potentially harmful chemicals in foods, I highly suggest you check out this video right here.